Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I think it's time to do some exercises with uh, indefinite integrals. Um, we spend some time to define what basically is indefinite integral as an operation which is uh, inverse to differentiation. Um, I also explained some physical considerations which led to the concept of integral. Um, speed, distance, how to basically find out what's the distance if you know the speed at every point. And uh, so let's just do some exercises. I have uh, 10 different very, very simple um, exercises on integration. And let's just do them just one by one. Okay. Number one. What is integral of just gx? Well, I mean, you might just stop and think about, usually we were talking about integral of f of x dx equals g of x plus c, where derivative of g is equal to f, right? And they don't have an f of, f, f of x here, right? There is no function. Well, there is a function. The function is equal to 1, obviously. So the function which is always equal to 1, that's my function, it's a constant. Now, question is, what is the function derivative of which is equal to 1? Well, obviously the function is function x. So function g of x is equal to x. If you take a derivative, that's x to the uh, power of 1, and the derivative would be 1 times x to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 0. So we have, we have 1. That's number 1. Number 2, I have integral of x to the power of a dx. Now, I will write an answer just because I remember what is the derivative of the power function. So the power function um, whenever I put something like this, I know that derivative reduces the power by 1. And there is a factor here, right? Derivative of this is a plus 1 times a plus 1 minus 1, which means x to the power of a. So I've got x to the power of a, but I have this factor uh, a plus 1, which we have to neutralize somehow. So to neutralize, I divide it by a plus 1, and then plus c. Obviously, a should not be equal to minus 1 in this case. For minus 1, it's a different story. We will do it later. I do have another uh, problem with this. So that actually gives me the function, the derivative of which is equal to x to the power of a. Because x to the power of a plus 1 gives me a plus 1 times x to the power of a, if I differentiate it. And then I have to divide by a plus 1 to get just x to the power of a. Next, e to the power of x. Now, e to the power of x is the only function derivative of which is equal to itself. So I know that this is e to the power of x plus c, obviously. Because the derivative of e to the power of x is equal to e to the power of x. So we know that. Now, these are all very, very trivial things, and they're immediately following from um, what we know about derivatives. We know the derivative of a power function, we know the derivative of um, exponential function. So there is another exponential function, integral of a to the power of x dx. Now, do you remember what is a derivative of a to the power of x? Well, that's a to the power of x times natural logarithm of a. So, I have to neutralize natural logarithm of a to get just a to the power of x. Derivative of this is a to the power of x multiplied uh, by, by logarithm of uh, a. So, I have to divide it by logarithm, natural logarithm of a to get just a to the power of x. Next. Next, let's go to this function. This is exactly x to the power of minus 1. Now, one of the few things which I remember about differentiation, that logarithm x has a derivative 1 over x. 
I do remember power function. I do remember exponential function. I do remember logarithm. And I remember sine and cosine. Everything else I derive from it. So I do remember this. Logarithm x, if you differentiate it, you will get 1 over x. Okay. Now let's wipe it out and go to the next series. This is a very simple and very short lecture, which I have titled Simple Exercise. So it's very, very simple. It's just sufficient to know some basic um, formula, formulas of uh, differentiation to come up with whatever I have here. 6. Integral of sine of x. Now, what is a derivative? What is the function derivative of which is equal to sine? Well, cosine, right? But cosine gives me minus sine. So I have to get minus cosine x to get minus sine and minus would be plus sine. And that's exactly what it is. Now, similarly, what is function derivative of which is equal to cosine? Again, I do remember it happened to be sine. So I have this. 8. Cosine x minus sine x. Well, obviously you probably guess that it should be some kind of a linear combination between sine and cosine. So if I will take sine to get this, and cosine to get minus sine, the derivative of which would be cosine minus sine, right? So that would be an answer. Next two. Okay, integral of hyperbolic sine of, of x. Remember what it is? I think I did explain it once. This is a to the power of x minus e to the power of minus x divided by 2. And cosine hyperbolic is equal to plus divided by 2. So let's go to a derivative. What's the derivative of sine? Well, one half is going down, obviously, right? e to the power of x, derivative is e to the power of x. Now, minus, minus, derivative of e to the power of minus x. Now, that's a um, chain rule. First, we do e to the power of something. This is e to the power of something. Times derivative of inner function, which is multiplication of minus 1, gives me plus. And which is what? This is cosine. So derivative of hyperbolic sine is a hyperbolic cosine. Now derivative of hyperbolic cosine is e to the power of x, and it would be minus e to the power of minus x and one half. So it would be hyperbolic sine, right? So let's use it. Now we know that this is dx. Cosine hyperbolic plus c. And my last example, integral of hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine plus c. Well, it's not an accident that these functions are called sines, hyperbolic, but sines, because they're really behaving very much like um, real sine and cosine. For instance, real sine has a derivative of cosine, and hyperbolic sine has a derivative of cosine. Real cosine has a de de derivative of minus sine, but, well, minus is just a minor detail. Mm, hyperbolic sine has a uh, derivative of sine. So they're turn, turning into each other by differentiation. 
And by the way, the, the formula about uh, sine square plus cosine square equals to 1. In this case, it's actually cosine square minus sine square is equal to 1. It's very easy to, uh, to prove. And that was my last example. I do suggest you to go through this again. You can take a look at the unizor.com website and look at the website. All these examples are there with answers. Uh, try to do them j just by yourself, so you remember it a little bit better. Well, other than that, that's it. It's a very short uh, lecture, and the real difficulties will, will come next. Thank you very much. Good luck.